Alpha Romeo, Julia. If emotion made a car, pain will make it stronger. Loss would feed its need to win. Tears would fuel it. Passion would be its motor. If emotion made a car, the money would be a fleeting thought. Its color would be one of desire. Its sound would roar with ambition, but purr like a feral cat. If emotion made a car, lust would trigger its ignition. Envy would be reserved for passengers, while pride drives, leaving a trail of sin in its emotional wake. If emotion made a car, you would name her Julia. This isn't just a new car, this is an entirely new benchmark. Built on a completely new platform with new engines that mark a new generation of Alfa Romeos. Julia was designed from the ground up by a select group of engineers led by two senior managers from Ferrari. This vehicle is quintessentially Italian and unmistakably Alfa Romeo. And we are gonna come out of the gate swinging with the iconic four-leaf clover version of the Giulia, the Quadrifoglio. This car will do the talking, and this is what it's gonna say. A Ferrari-derived 24-valve, all-aluminum, bi-turbo, direct injection V6, producing a staggering 505 horsepower with a curb weight around 3,600 pounds, and the driver's choice of a manual or automatic transmission with paddle shifters. Now let's just stop right here and put these numbers into context. These numbers aren't just class leading, they often surpass dedicated two-seater sports cars. And it starts with the most powerful engine in its class, generating 80 horsepower more than an M3 sedan and 75 horsepower more than an Audi R8. And putting it in a league once limited to high performance track-focused exotics. That is a staggering 174 horsepower per liter. That is true supercar territory. Yes, the new Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio is a beautiful car. But what about that green shamrock? How did that come to be? In 1923, and this car, the aptly named 1923 Targa Florio RL, it was built to compete in one of the oldest and most famous racing events of all time, the Targa Florida, a dangerous and thrilling open road endurance race held in the mountains of Sicily. The Alfa Romeo race team at the time was stacked. It boasted legendary drivers such as Antonio Ascari, Giulio Mazzotti, Enzo Ferrari, and Ugo Savacci. And what was interesting was that leading up to the 1923 racing season, Alpha driver Ugo Sabacci, aside from being incredibly superstitious, was a perennial second place finisher, more often than not finishing behind one of his Alpha teammates. So going into the Targa Florio race in 1923, in an effort to banish his bad luck, the superstitious Sabacci decided to paint a four-leaf clover on the side of his car for good luck. Sure enough, in his first race with the green four-leaf clover or quadrifolio on his car, Savachi won. However, a few weeks after Ugo's Florio victory, he was at Italy's famous Monza racetrack testing a new Alfa Romeo car. But unfortunately, there was no time to paint his lucky clover on the car before hitting the track. And tragically, he crashed and lost his life, and a legend was born. You see, the four-leaf clover on Udo's car 
was encased in a square box, while all future clovers were encased in a triangle, with the missing point symbolizing the loss of Ugo. And from that day forward, the four-leaf clover became the symbol of all Alfa Romeo race cars, and later the mark of Alfa Romeo's performance street vehicles as a performance indicator, and of course, as a symbol of good luck. So with a little luck on its side and a fierce stable of cars, Alfa Romeo began to dominate racing, amassing a racing resume that became the envy of the motorsports world. That included five world championships, 17 European championships, four 24 hours of Le Mans, and many, many more. But Alfa Romeo didn't achieve racing success by simply dropping powerful engines under a striped hood. The art of speed, as perfected by Alfa Romeo, is the art of balance, of power versus weight. Through the years, Alfa Romeo developed many engineering and design innovations that resulted in lightweight but durable chassis systems for their race cars. And those innovations were shared with street cars that were not only fast, but agile, responsive, and perfectly balanced.